First of all, I want to thank you all for coming here, um, to take your time to, uh, to be with us, to attend our meeting. My name is Christian Pana, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a theologian, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> As you've seen uh, Kaka, he went from sport to God. I would like to present from uh, the Bible a way to go to travel from science to God. So this is actually our theme for today. And uh, after I will give you some ideas about what I have discovered uh, about uh, dinosaurs and their link in the Bible. I will let you ask questions and I will try answering them. <laughs> uh, I will be honest, if there is a question, I have no idea the answer, I will tell you. I have no idea. Uh, I am not on, you know, uh, I don't have all the knowledge, but uh, what I have, I will share with you. And uh, if I don't know a, an answer, uh, I will take your email and I will send you that answer <laughs> well, once I will have that answer. Back in, in 2005, uh, Dr. Mary Higby Schweitzer discovered some tissue and blood um, from a dead dinosaur that was supposed to have died uh, 65 million years ago. The Tyrannosaurus rex specimen was a pregnant female uh, when she died. Uh, more recently, Schweitzer's work has shown molecular, molecular similarities between uh, T-Rex remains and chickens, and that was very interesting for me. Uh, due to the flesh discovered, we can say m a lot more now about dinosaurs uh, than before. We know now that uh, their skin was stripped. Uh, another detail uh, was is they, uh, had they uh, right now we know more about their flesh and they were with two meters longer than we suppose they supposed to be. We, we knew about that. All these discoveries shocked the world and um, the main question was how is possible to have a 65 million year old steak? And actually that was it. Scientists said at that time that it is impossible to find a living tissue after this amount of time. Scientists are not so open-minded uh, as they claim to be, but what can we do? The flesh was not exposed to the air, so um, otherwise it would have degenerated. So um, right now we understand if the flesh was buried really fast, it was something, it happened something. When with a big animal, a big burial, and because it is found in sediments, then we talk about flood deposits. Now we know why scientists are not so open-minded. Uh, what do we know about dinosaurs? Well, uh, there is a place on the border of USA and Canada called the Badlands because nothing grows there. In that place, a lot of dinosaurs' uh, uh, bones were discovered. Um, in some cases, under uh, in in some cases in, in under the rib cage in the stomach, there were discovered plants and pine cone scales. Pine cone scales are still eaten today, but they are disgusting. In the same site that were with this dinosaur were, were discovered petrified queen figs and um, a fig is and was a fig. A T-Rex was and is a T-Rex. Uh, that was a problem why they didn't change over time. Um, uh, a T-Rex was up to 12 meters long about four to six uh, meters tall, and he weighed almost five to seven ton tons. The name comes from the fact that he's considered the king of the dinosaurs, Rex. <laughs> he's the king. Um, 
What we know about dinosaurs is a result of an educated guess based on comparing the dinosaur skeletons with modern animals. Scientists today classify dinosaurs as reptiles. And as you see, uh, is uh, the next, uh, okay, the next slide. Uh, as you can see, uh, here we have some, I, I found those, uh, uh, these uh, pictures from the internet, uh, figs and uh, um, dinosaur bone, bo bo bones, and even cones, pine cones. Well, um, dinosaur, dinosaur bones were discovered in the Netherlands, England, USA, um, East Africa, Mongolia, and right now, actually, uh, now they've been found on every continent on the world of the world. Some dinosaurs are quite small. Uh, they, some of them they uh, they have they uh, about the size of a chicken, and uh, some of them they were huge. And it is generally believed that they were much they were much bigger than any animal living on land. Uh, even until today. Uh, why, I'm, why I'm saying generally believe? Because this is a myth. Actually, uh, from the data we have until today, um, dinosaurs were not the biggest creatures on the earth. Actually, the biggest creature on the earth is contemporary with us, is the blue whale. And I have uh, some, I've, I have found some pictures. Would you like to? Yeah, this is the blue whale, and it's 30 meters long. <laughs> and here is our T Rex. It's ah, small. And this is Orca. I don't know if you know Orca. Uh, but I found out uh, a very interesting video, and I would like to share with you, uh, about uh, blue whale. And blue whales are very interesting. I will let him talk. Dwarfed by the vast expanse of the open ocean, the biggest animal that has ever lived on our planet. A blue whale. 30 meters long and weighing over 200 tons. It's far bigger than even the biggest dinosaur. Its tongue weighs as much as an elephant. Its heart is the size of a car. And some of its blood vessels are so wide that you could swim down them. Its tail alone is the width of a small aircraft's wings. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. I find it interesting. Interesting, but my question is: uh, Are we sure dinosaurs are extinct? Some scientists try to convince us that all dinos disappeared 65 million uh, years ago, by the end of uh, Cretaceous pre period. But how about Mokele Membe? Um, who is still alive in the jungles of Congo. Uh, since 1913, we have testimonies from local villagers who talk about a creature that closely resembles uh, Brontosaurus. In 1979, James Powell reported about a strange animal, Nyamala, sorry for Nyamala, living in the swamps of Gabon, which uh, resembles the Sauropod diplodocus. 1981, Herman Regusters came with footprints and sound recordings from Mokele Mbembe at Lake Tele. Uh, 1983, Marceline Aganya, I think I didn't, <laughs> uh, he's not upset at me because I, I think I, I uh, miss his name, but he's a zoologist and claimed 
he saw Mukele Mumembe at Lake Tele. On April 25, 1979, a fish, a fishing vessel, yeah, that's it, a fishing vessel named the Zuyumaru of the Taiyo Fishery Company was trawling for mackerel about 30 miles east of Christchurch, New Zealand, when a large animal car carcass became entangled in its nets in a depth of about 300 meters. This is it. Uh, and it looks like something. <laughs> like something. Another carcass was uh, discovered in November 1970 on the Men's Hill Beach, Massachusetts, USA. It looked like a plesiosaurus, which was described like a camel without legs. And we have a picture down there. During the Civil War in 1864, near the city of Vic Vicksburg, uh, Terranodon, a pterosaurus-like animal was shot by some soldiers. The pu pu publication type, believe it or not, who published the picture in 1950, referred to the creature as some kind of a known bird or monster. Um, is the Bible silent about dinosaurs? Um, when I told my German language teacher about preparing my seminar, he was shocked finding that the Bible is supporting dinosaurs' uh, existence. He thought Christians don't believe dinosaurs existed. And uh, actually, I invited him today, but he couldn't come. Um, but he asked me uh, about my study. In uh, Job 41, we have a clear description of uh, Leviathan and Behemoth, two creatures created by God who resembles dinosaurs. I will read you some, some, uh, uh, some parts of, from this text from Job 41. Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook or press down his tongue with a cord? Can you fill his skin with harpoons or his head with fishing spears? Lay your hand on him, lend hands on him. Remember the battle, you will not do it again. Actually, God is speaking. Uh, in Job 41. Who can open the doors of his face around his teeth is terror. His back is made of rows of shields shut up closely as with a seal. His sneezing flash forth light and his eyes are like the eyelids of the dawn. Out of his mouth go flaming torches, sparks of fire leap forth. Out of his nostrils come forth smoke as from a boiling pot and burning rushes. His underparts are like sharp post hurts. He spreads himself like a threshing sledge on the mire. Uh, behind him, he leaves a shining wake. One would think uh, the deep to be white, white hair. On earth, there is, no, uh, there is not his like, a creature without fear. He sees everything that is high he is king over all the sons of pride. Of course, this is a poetic language, but you you understand what what is what, what was what was all about. The monster described by God here is found in the book of Job, not in the book of Moses. Job lived after the Tower of Babel, so after the flood, and and God talks with uh, Job. Like he knew who Leviathan and, and Behemoth were. Um, Job was living in the land of Uz, uh, one of the Noah's descendants. After the Babel uh, experience, Uz left the place and founded his own city, who took his name after him. By now, creatures are mighty, men are afraid of them. Well, that's interesting how in Genesis all animals were good. The word Leviathan is translated with sea monster or dragons. Actually, this is the, uh, the translation of the word. All translations of the Bible call it dragon. The behemoth is described moving on earth and in the air with great speed, 
fire breathing, powerful constitution, and strong teeth. We don't find the word dinosaur in the Bible, but Leviathan and Behemoth resembles dinosaurs very much. We cannot find some words in the Bible because at that time that word didn't exist, like um, um, atomic bomb or radio. You will not, you will never find these words in the Bible because they were discovered afterwards or named and coined the name afterwards. Or uranium, you will never find there, but there are a lot of things that are described uh, in the Bible very well. The word dinosaur doesn't exist, but we can see it with Viathan and Behemoth, um, like dinosaur sort animals. Who coined the name dinosaur? Uh, dinosaur, and this is the guy. His name is um, Richard Owen. In 1841, um, he coined the, this name, Dinosauria. And it comes from dino and is from dynamite. And actually, this word from, come, comes from um, Greek. Dunamis is power, powerful. And actually means a terrible or powerful lizard or reptile. <laughs> this is a dinosaur. But before, um, actually, even Richard Owen called these kind of uh, animals dragons. But afterwards, he came up with this name, dinosaur. Uh, nasty, vicious monsters, sharp teeth, evil looking eyes, and always hungry. <laughs> this is what we know about dinosaurs, and actually more into it comes from Jurassic Park, the movie. <laughs> but this is the guy, and he, he was a geologist. He had, at that time, the best um, um, Dinosaur bones uh, collection, and he was interested in, in dinosaurs. <clears throat> he told Darwin he had no bone to back up his theory. Darwin um, uh, wrote his book on evolution, evolutionism in 1859, but this guy in 1841 um, coined his name dinosaur. Richard Owen before coining the word dinosaur was uh, using the term dragon and um, it's, he, dragon actually comes by definition with a monster with big teeth. We have stories now how we killed all dragons uh, out. They also breathe fire, right? And interesting, even in the Bible we find this uh, picture and it's not a strange picture. Because I really believed, and I really believe, sorry, believe that God created dinosaurs. And um, in the book of Genesis, it is said, and God said, behold, I have given you every plant, yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth, and every bird of heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has to, uh, the, uh, the breath of life, I have given every green plant to food. Actually, this is the description of Genesis um, of all animals that God created, and they were in the Garden of Eden, a very nice place to live. But uh, Adam and Eve didn't like it very much because they wanted out. And, <laughs> and here we are outside the garden. But uh, what can we do? God created dinosaurs. They were eating not grass, but green stuff. I don't know, from, from uh, trees. But actually they were... In the beginning, they were eating greenery. Um, in verse 
26 in the first chapter of Genesis, God is saying to Adam and Eve that their main concern in the garden was to have dominion over all the animals, all the birds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth was the, uh, how God told them. Um, it doesn't matter if uh, you have 2,000 sharp teeth in mouth. All what Adam had to say was, down boy. And I, I really believe that Adam and Eve, they were playing with even dinosaurs. And they were their pets. Uh, and he was not afraid of them. Um, at that time, and even after Adam and Eve stepped out of the Garden of Eden, uh, animals didn't kill each other. Um, actually, interesting, I was looking in the Bible and the dominion is expressed as an ongoing action. Adam and Eve had dominion over all sorts of, even fish. And I was thinking maybe they saw a blue whale and she, and maybe Eve said, hey, stop. And blue whale stopped. It was a time like that. But today's world is not what we read in Genesis chapter 1. Why? And because we understand a lot of violence came after. And when we find a carnosaur uh, teeth, a meat eater, uh, kind of a sort of a dinosaur, we believe that was a meat eater because not that we've seen one eating, but we associate sharp teeth with murder and meat eater. So we think, hey, he was eating animals. He was eating meat. Um, if they got flat teeth, they can chew things. If they had sharp teeth, they can rip things. According to the Bible, God created all animals to eat this kind of a greenery. We assume that big sharp teeth were used to rip plants not flesh in the beginning. Something happened uh, and the whole creation turned upside down from pets and herbs er, and uh, from pets and herb eaters, animals become monsters and meat eaters. Does the Bible give us a perspective on that? And I think yes. Uh, when sin came in the world through Adam and Eve, its disobedience, all system, fall apart. When God sent animals in the Ark of Noah, he sent seven clean animals, the Bible said that. The others were unclean. And later on in Bible, it is said that unclean animals are the ones who eat dead things. Well, the wage of sin is death, and by the time of Noah, we have dead animals. If you have flat teeth and you Want to chew a dead cow? That would be difficult. But if you have sharp teeth, that will help. That will help because you can rip it up and that dead body. And by Noah's flood, some animals become scavengers. After the flood, we learn that some animals become carnivores, eat, uh, meat eaters. By the time of Joseph, we know it could be a true story that. A wild animal killed Joseph. Animals' teeth didn't change. They remained the same teeth, but now a mouth with sharp teeth will inspire fear. But that was not the case in the beginning. But now, yes. Um, the lion will attack you because he knows you will attack him just for pleasure. And we hunt for pleasure, not because we are hungry. Uh, and he will know that. Late enough, dinosaurs started to use these kind of a sharp teeth on us because we have attacked them, maybe with sticks and with arrows. Animals feel fear when they, um, and when they feel fear, they bite first. If I don't bite first, he will kick me first. So it's kind of a thing. 
We are afraid of them, they are afraid of us. Animals learn that they, if they attack first, this is their chance to survive. After all, we were the sinners, not them, not the animals. But animals, actually, I believe that we trained all these animals to become, some of them, to become monsters from pets because of our own mind that is sometimes not good. When God created the animals, there was peace among animals and among animals and men because human beings accepted the sovereignty, sovereign authority of God and animals accepted our dominion over them. When, God, when sin separated us from God, he said, that separated us from animals too. And it's very interesting how fear, actually the Bible said that Adam and Eve, their first reaction after their sin, after their disobedience, they tried to hide themselves uh, there because they, they saw they were naked. And the second reaction was they were afraid of God. Fear is what comes, is actually fear is a byproduct of sin. This is what the Bible teach and what we really believe. Um, after the flood, the climate change and the balance of the soil was gone and there was grass, but not for every animal for, on the earth. So some of them um, took alternatives and next alternative from grass is meat. <laughs> so right now we can understand why all happened, but everything goes back in the garden of Eve, uh, uh, Eden, Eden, sorry, <laughs> where Adam and Eve um, disobeyed God. Um, the world is degrading and we know why. Um, we train dinosaurs and other animals to become the mass uh, monsters they are and they were and are. And um, right now we know the root problem is not their teeth, but our condition, our heart and our sin. Um, fear made them what they are now. Um, there is a saying in the Bible, in, is a prophetic message in the book of Isaiah, that in future, the wolf shall dwell, shall, shall dwell with the lamb. And that's very interesting when we know in the future, Jesus Christ, as the Bible said, will come back and he will reign all over the earth. And at that time, it will be true. What you see here is what we will see. Wolf and the lamb. Uh, today, if a wolf will lay with the lamb, just the wolf will get up. But then, as was in the Garden of Eden, that will be possible. So it is something in the future, but it, it is something that will be permanent, not just for 1,000 year, but years, but for eternity. Uh, and this is why Jesus Christ, as Kaka said, hey, I belong to Jesus. Why Jesus Christ came, and this is the reason why we had Easter, because he died and he rose again, and the problem of sin is forever solved. Um, it is good to know that what happened before it will end. And this world, type of world that we know now, will be different. Um, I really love that we can find dinosaurs in the Bible. And I really, really love that we understand what happened with them and what is happening with us. Because otherwise, without a book like the Bible, it would be uh, very negative.
negligent with our lives. I hope we will do better, better than dinosaurs uh, because they, from pet, they become monsters and from monsters to extinction. Um, we were something else and we become because of our heart. We become something that is not right, quite right. But I hope you and I can do better than them and we can choose, as Kaka said, choose God. This is what, why we are, we have church. This is why we did what we do now uh, because we really believe that this problem of humanity, the sin, can be solved and it is solved. We need just a little bit of faith. Now, if you have questions, I would love to answer. Of course, from not like a scientist, but like a theologian. And if you have questions, I would, I would love to hear them. What do you think? There is no bad question. All questions are good. <laughs> I've got one then. Please. Would it be disrespectful to leave now? Because I, I did not know that it was going to last until 9. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no problem at all. Anytime, anytime. It's okay. <laughs> it's not disrespectful. No, no. no. Was that question good enough? Or? Perfect. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's a good question. Were dinosaurs in the Noah's, in Noah's Ark or not? What do you think? Yeah. Some. Some? Yeah? I guess the blue whale was not because... <laughs> <laughs> not all animals, that's right. <laughs> because some of them, they were in the water. <laughs> so they don't need the Ark, right? <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, what do you think? Um, the Bible said that God told animals to come to Noah's Ark. And um, I personally, I don't believe that God told uh, huge T-Rex to come, but maybe young ones, small ones. Or why not? Maybe... Um, he took eggs. Why not? You know, into in in he in his right pocket one egg, in his left pocket another one egg. Yeah, why not? Um, actually, I was thinking about this question, and uh, this is Noah's Ark, and these are other kind of ships that are today, and you can see how big it was. This is uh, a dinosaur egg. Some of them, they were bigger than that, but <laughs> it's, it's okay. Um, and there is something else. Before the flood, and well, this is more uh, a subject for next time. I, will, I thought to talk more about the flood next time, so whoever is interested, we have great things about the flood, but um, before the flood, people were living more than today. Um, next. This is from Bible, okay? So what we know is some of them they lived almost 900 years, between 800 and 900. Uh, Enoch, Enoch was uh, some, his an ex exception, but I, I'm not talking about him now. Um, so we know a, a man is uh, 
growing until he reaches maturity, right? Uh, crocodiles, they don't. They, they are growing until they die. So, let's say um, Noah lived almost 900 years and he reached maturity when? <laughs> uh, let's say in the middle, okay? Um, 400. Mm. He was growing 400 years. Um, previous slide. Noah's ark was 50 feet or cubits. And a cubit is like this. But Noah's cubit was a little bigger than that. So probably Noah's ark was bigger than we think. And when he came, when God sent all the animals, I think if I would be God, I would send young animals, not huge animals. And some of them, they really did not need the ark. So, I don't know, I was not there. <laughs> but at least I can, you know, think of a kind of an answer. I don't know if this is the answer or not. We will know. But right now, this is what I think. Based on the Bible and all the da data that I have today. Yes, please. But it's not fair. Why should he make any differences between old and young? I think it would be better to try to save all of them, not to say you come because you're younger and you have... No, what I said family. is uh, um, if I would be God, I would not choose to send a Tyrex uh, adult, but a young one. Not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, I was not there. <laughs> I assume it was like that. So it is possible. That what I am trying to say is it is possible. It's not impossible. And because we find out uh, those dinosaurs after the flood and after the Tower of Babel, uh, somewhere in between Tower of Babel and Abraham, Job lived. So because he knew about these two kind of uh, dinosaurs, I assume they were living, still living then, and they were known. And in time, they become extinct, or why not? Maybe one of them is in Congo today. <laughs> yes, please. Um, it can be very different question, but uh -huh. I was um, curious that um, type Darwin, he instilled uh, evolution, and uh, most, uh, as, far as I know, the most Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, how can you understand those bones are uh, like uh, monkeys or just a kind of a human? How, how, how can you understand? I have no idea. This is one of that questions that I really don't know. I know a lot of things about um, how you date bones, yeah. but I don't know much how you can, you know, can, you can say this is a chimpanzee and this is a man. I have no idea. I, I, I don't have this expertise and I don't want to say, you know, something that is not truthful. So I, I have no idea. I'm sorry. Can I try? Yeah. 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 Please. Um, I have more questions. How, oh, is thank actually, you. Yeah, how is actually Jesus going to bring like the animals and the human beings back to the initial state when he comes here. Okay. That's or is third. there any clue in the Bible about this? Yes. Um, actually, uh, Jesus Christ is called the Prince of Peace. And um, when he left you know, the earth, he said to his disciples, I will give you peace, but I will give you my peace, not like, like the world gives peace. So there is a peace in the midst of the troubles. 
that something is not natural. Um, so we, we can talk about more kind of, of the peace, but because he's the prince of peace, he can make peace. If he was able to make peace between God and man, there is nothing for him to make peace between men and uh, human beings and animals. Why? Because this was the state before uh, in the Garden of Eden. So it's nothing impossible. It was a time when uh, the ox and the bear, they were eating grass. And actually, in the book of Isaiah, said they will eat straw and grass again. So if Jesus was able, through his death and resurrection, to make peace between God and man, and that was the, the hardest one, nobody could do that. And he was able to do that, this is not the end. So if, and that, this is, you know, now I see how he did that between man and God, but how he will do between human beings and animals, or among animals, peace, is a matter of faith. Uh, faith is nothing, you know, oh, if you say so, yes, I believe. No, no, no. I have some evidence, and I choose to believe the rest. But when I don't have any evidence, this is not faith. This is insane, yeah, crazy. <laughs> but faith comes with a little bit of something, and you choose to, like, um, yeah. So, in the Bible, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, and he will make peace. It's actually it's a prophecy. And now, I, if I go here, I will <laughs> spend too much time, but if so many prophecies were true, and they were accomplished. Why not this one? <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question, but thank you for the question. was very good. Like yours, but I couldn't answer. I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, so we know that human beings live and they have a soul. My question is, how that the animal lives and they don't have a soul? I mean, how does the animal think? Yes, well, when God created the man, he breathed in their nostrils uh, life. But he didn't do that for animals. So it is quite different between animals and human beings. Um, but in Genesis, all animals are called nefesh haya, uh, living creatures. So the principle of life, there is in them too, like in us, but we have more than that. We have something from God. And when God breathes through something, that something, whatever it is, comes to life. And he actually did that for Adam. Because Eve was taken from what? His? Yeah, rib. So they live, but not like us. <laughs> yes? Any other interest? Question. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I just would like a clarification. <laughs> you, uh, um, so, you believe that dinosaurs existed during the life the lifetime of human beings? Sure. And that maybe possibly there is still some dinosaur. Well, it's world. just a question. I have no idea. I, I was not there, but. Okay. People say that they saw them, they took samples, even from their droppings. So. Okay, and then uh, you also believe that th there was a flood that took the entire planet. 
Yeah, it's it's actually it's um, the entire planet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now let's just okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'll, I will go a little bit further if you allow me. Oh yeah. <laughs> because it's very interesting and maybe next time I'll talk more about that but right now just a mm -hmm. clarification yeah. in the Bible in so the Old Testament was written in Hebrew okay yeah. but uh, the the word uh, for hill is the same for mountain My question is, when, because that was my problem, how if, you know, the Bible said that the flood, um, the, the waters were over the highest mountain, and we know the highest mountain today is Mount Everest, and in my mind was, how in the world the water was over Mount Everest, with 50 cubits, how? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Even I'm a Christian, I didn't digest that. Mm -hmm. I'm honest. Mm -hmm. But I found out that when, um, and I should go now in Psalm 104 and tell you what, what is, why I believe that, mm -hmm. but when God, um, commanded the waters to withdraw. Actually, that was the time when the mountains were formed, as we know mountains. Before, there were hills. So the, the theory of 600 flats is wrong. Why? Because mountains take millions of years to form, not like but, that. But they are, how, how, how mountains are formed? There are two ways, right? Through volcanic uh, activity yeah. and through? And through plaques that go like this. Uh, and yeah, and, and if, yeah. if you take, uh, you, and if you push them, right? The mountains will rise. Yes. It is true. But it happens when God told them to do that and mountains were rising, and the waters withdrawn. All of this in the space of a life of a human. Oh, uh, yeah, Noah's. <laughs> but if you have time, next time, uh, next month we would like to have another meeting like this, and I will talk more about the flood, and I will come with some pictures too. That would be interesting, I assure you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for me, it was very interesting to find out this, and I will explain next time. But today is too much. And I don't have time. It's, I, I don't want to take advantage of your time. I said at 8.30 we will kind of finish. But I would like to have one more question. and. Maybe we'll have another song and we have something to eat and we can talk more. I'm available to you. But uh, if, you, if you have another question, if anybody has another question, I would like to take at least one, just one. Not at least, just one, because we don't have much time. But afterwards, if you have questions, I love questions. And if I don't know the question, answer, I will say, well, when I have an opinion, I will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs>